Each victim will rescue. A good refrigeration system will work for years, but sometimes parts fail. In this case, the compressor got very hot, but the compressor might not be faulty. The heat of the compressor might be an effect of some other faults, and for this we have to investigate the refrigerant charge, the electrical system. So now let's pull out the compressor for investigation. There are many types that a compressor would be wired by the manufacturer. This one will be a three-phase simple compressor. As you will see, we have only three pins and it is pre-wired inside. Then you can have six pins if you look to this electrical connection of the compressor. That could be either star or delta. You don't know until you will measure or you will read on the compressor's batch. You can have also a single phase compressor and you will have three pins but then you will identify quickly that compressor its single phase. Now let's focus on a simple three phase compressor. It is the first one in the left hand side. This compressor cannot be configured it is come pre-configured by the manufacturer. You have only three pins and the only thing you can do it is to check the resistance in between the three pins. Please ignore the fact that I put star delta because this compressor come pre-wired. Now if you look to the red arrow you will see a thermal overload protection device it is analog. It sends an input to an electronic circuit and that electronic circuit we will measure the value which is sent by this thermoresistor. For this one to be investigated a multimeter with the capability to read over 2 kilo ohms it is recommended. This is also a thermal overload protection but this is a digital one all or nothing so this is a bimetal blade which will open the circuit when the compressor will get too hot just be careful if the compressor is cold and this thermal protective device it is an open circuit then this device might be damaged it is inside the compressor there's nothing you can do about this Sometimes you have a good compressor but a bad thermal overload protection. You can use the compressor but you have to use alternative solutions to make sure that you'll protect the compressor. Now it is time for you to measure the compressor. As you will see, this compressor can be configured in star or delta but you can choose. It is pre-configured. Although you have a nerf link. So you have to do two types of measurements. First, you have to measure the resistance in between the windings U1, V1, W1. The resistance must be the same for all three readings. And then you have to do an insulation test with a mega and make sure the value read will be above a mega ohm. Otherwise, your compressor won't be safe to run. As I said before, regardless how the compressor it is configured, you have only three pins and you have to check in between these pins. On the compressor, you will see L1, L2, L3. I put on the windings W1, w, uh, U1 and V1. In between U1 and W1, you have to say have the same resistance value like in between W1 and V1 and the same resistance like between V1 and U1. They all have to be similar. If you have a lower resistance in between two of the windings, it means there's something wrong and your compressor have an electrical fault. If you remember, we talked about 
Thermal overload protection. This is a digital one, bimetal blade, which should open the circuit only if the compressor it is very hot. If the compressor it is cold and you have an open circuit, then the thermal over overload protection might be damaged. Just be careful. If you measure the compressor windings and they are okay, you can use this system without the thermal overload protection, but you have to make sure that you use alternative solutions to protect the compressor. If you remember earlier, I told you about the insulation test. Now we all know that the winding should have a very high or very high or a perfect open circuit with the earth. So you have to use a MIGA and to measure in between each of these pins of the compressor U1, V1 and W1 and earth. The value you read on your MIGA should be above 1 mega ohm. Otherwise, your compressor won't be safe to run. Now let's talk about star delta compressors. With these systems, you have an option. You can configure these systems in star or delta, or you can use an automatic transition from star to delta. For this one, you will need contactors and time delay relays. I will explain to you how these things work. But for now, let's see how we can investigate this type of system. To measure the windings for this compressor, it is extremely simple. If you look careful, if there's not any link in between these little pins where you connect the wires on the compressor, you will realize that the compressor windings are not touching on any point. You will be the one to connect this winding. And as I said, you have two options, either star or delta. You use delta if you want to start the system on DOL, direct overload star, which is not recommended because you'll put a lot of strain into the wiring. So look at this. You come with three individual windings, which are not touching. To measure this, you first identify the winding terminals. In our case, you can use U1 and W1 to measure, and then you can use V2 and W1, and also you can use V1 and W2. Now, you have to have the same resistance for all these three windings, because you use a three-phase system, and if any of the resistance it is different, then your compressor have an electrical problem. Every time you'll have a star delta system, you will see on the compressor's batch or electrical drawings the star and the delta sign, which is on the top of the electrical drawings. So please, before you'll investigate a compressor, look for this sign. And if the compressor is very old and damaged and you have to work in a kind of titanic-like compressors, make sure you use your multimeter to identify the type of the compressor. Now the boring repetition you must check the thermal overload protection. If you have a thermal resistance, you use a multimeter capable to read above two kilo ohms. If you have a bimetal blades, you only need to check the continuity. And as I said before, if the compressor is cold, there is no reason for that thermal overload protection to have an open circuit. If it's an open circuit, it means the thermal overload protection is damaged. You can use the compressor even without that one. Sometimes people damage it's incorrect wiring or something wrong. Yet you don't have to dump the compressor in a bin, but you have to use an alternative solution to protect the compressor. I don't want to be a pain, but some engineers are wiring the compressor without connecting the thermal overload protection. Some people put bad refrigerant, make a very bad vacuum. They don't care about the humidity inside the refrigeration system and the compressor get hotter than it should. They don't apply the right superheat and because of this they run the compressor very hot. The compressor will die sooner than it should and the client suffer and that's not fair for the client. Just like for the other compressor you have to do an insulation test. You have to make sure the compressor is safe to run. 
so after you did the winding resistance check you have to look and to find out about the compressor insulation insulation integrity use a mega and then you'll measure in between windings and the earth terminal the value on omega should not be under one mega ohm if it is one that one under one mega ohm then your compressor it is not safe to run you finished your motor investigation now you have three options to run your motor in star in delta or to have an automatic control star we transition to delta the star wiring configuration it's usually used for small pumps or fans the compressor we mostly use on Delta and you can use it as I said before to have a DOL start but that it is inappropriate it will put a big stress on the wiring now let's make the compressor's electrical box bigger with the risk of upsetting yourself because of my repetition I have to tell you that this type of compressor winding come not configured at all so you have three individual windings if you will apply power to only three terminals you won't do nothing you only bring three phase in three individual windings as you will see here the three phase will not meet at any point so three windings will have uh, 415 volts potentials in between themselves so the compressor will not run now let's turn the electricity off and start again this is a start configuration you have to short out three ends of the three terminals to create the star connection now if you look to the star version you will see that you just joined three terminals of the winding in a point and that creates the star now when you will apply the power again you will see that the windings are power up and they are joined in a point and that will turn the compressor in this situation you will run the system only at half of its capacity in between the two phases you will have UK 415 volts which is okay but in between each phase and the origin and I'll give you an example W1 and V2 in the middle you'll have only half of the value that you have in between the two phases so this will be only half of the capacity obviously in between the two phases we have two resistances so you will use the ohm law and you can calculate the power yourself now let's talk about delta delta it's a different way of wiring the compressor you will double the power because in this case for each winding the voltage will double up despite delta it is uh, the way the compressor should run it is not recommended to start a compressor on Delta because it will put a stress on the electrical supply if you look to the triangle on the right hand side you will see how the Delta is wired now you will short circuit you will link U1 with U2 W2 to W1 and V1 to W2 and that will be your delta connection which is actually a DOL now when you will apply power you look at the triangle it is all powered up so you have two phases for each winding and you will increase actually double the voltage to each winding terminal that will increase the power you just learn about star and delta now let's talk about star delta star for this you need three contactors the first contactor it is the driving one and it must have a time delay relay which will switch the contactor to 
to contactor number 3, which will mean that you will switch from star to delta. You will bring the contactors and also you will build two lamps, two witnesses to tell you if the system runs either on star or delta. Now it is time to wire the contactors. We use the three phase and we'll bring the life to the contactor terminals, to the contactor inputs. After we finish the wiring, we'll prepare ourselves to start the unit. For this, we need a switch on to the control panel. Now let's turn the switch on. As you'll see, the three phase reaches the contactor number one and the contactor number three input terminals. Because the contactors are not activated by the control system, it is obvious that the compressor gets nothing. The control now turn on the contactor number one and the time delay allows the contactor number two to turn instantly. If you look, the power supply is going now to U1, V1 and W1 and the contactor number two, it will short circuit the V, the U2, V2, W2 and that will create a star. So you start the system in star mode. The time delay relay stop counting and you start the delta mode. You stop the contactor number two and it enables the contactor number three. In this case, the power will go to U1, V1, W1 and also it will go to U2, V2, W2. So that will create the triangle. This is the delta. So this is it. You just create a star delta automatic control and your system will run accordingly to the regulation. DOL is not recommended. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe and watch my other videos that are related to the refrigeration and air conditioning equipment. Thank you very much. Goodbye.